what happens down the road when the Galactic Star Cruiser's getting a little long in the tooth? Hmm, let's see. Hey, this is Tom with Tom's Tech Show, and I mean, I'm never going to go on the Galactic Star Cruiser per se, because it's just out of my price range and out of my value, experience value to cost ratio, right? I mean, if I, I've been to, you know, our favorite place to vacation, Cabo San Lucas, I've been there, paid uh, $1,500 for a week at a beach hotel and then did excursions like wave runners and I went and released turtles into the ocean. That's just the most amazing fun thing. You know, going and watching little guys scurry out to the edge of the water and go, and you can't help them because they need to imprint getting down the beach into the ocean on their own so that they know when to come back. And it gets crazy because you don't know if what you're doing, helping release these turtles back into the wild, is going to repopulate anything at any given place for like 15 years. It's like 15 years before they come back and relay their eggs and, and do all this stuff. It's, you know, being a part of that is just amazing experience if you can ever go somewhere and release turtles and stuff they're so cute and, and everything else and it's just it's just a fun thing you're at the beach it's typically sunset it's you know all this stuff and everything. but i digress because that whole trip didn't even cost me maybe twenty five hundred dollars and that was a week you know at at the beach, you know, including all my food and, and drinks and whatever. So now we have the Galactic Star Cruiser where it has a few little Star Wars trappings. It has a few different things going on. But my thought really is five years down the road uh, when this thing's been going on, what happens to the electronics inside? What happens to the different things that are going on inside. I mean, we've seen videos, you know, like there's the video where there's, you know, in your room, you have this little screen. Well, what happens if that screen goes dead? I mean, what's, I mean, all, you know, TV monitors, whatever, have this thing called an MTBF, which is the mean time before failure. So it's going to, you know, how long, you know, this TV can be on for, you know, 3000 hours before it stops. Well, that's just the mean time. That's just the average. It could die next week. I mean, I was at uh, an airport here in Tampa, and, you know, the monitors that are there, there's a bunch of them that are together, and they're all showing this images and stuff. And half of them are dark and don't display quite right. The others are burnt in. Some of the color doesn't match because, you know, they've gotten so old sitting there. So what happens, you know, to all of this stuff? And there's other different displays inside here, right? They go up to this panel here and are going to hit the thing and then all these little things come up. I mean, once those things have been sitting there and displayed on that screen for so long, it's going to burn in and, and, you know, start to look a little odd and a little, a little different. And then they're, you know, when they have the, the star, the, the lightsaber duel up in the top, you know, the, the little thing falls down, you know, it has steam come out when they're, when uh, Kylo Ren and Ray are having their little lightsaber battle. All these things, like we've been on, you know, the small world at Disneyland. Now, when you come around the one corner and you get ready to go to the Little Mermaid under the sea kind of area, sometimes there's bubbles coming down to give you the illusion of getting underwater. Sometimes the bubbles aren't. Sometimes the bubbles are over on the side going, you know, sometimes the whole thing is closed up. So it's a different experience depending on when you get to that point. But that's just a ride that's included with a normal ticket. And, you know, being on it so many times, I kind of understand, okay, there's, there might be, you know, a few minor uh, little flaws. But then here's this thing. This is a Buzz Light, the Buzz Lightyear ride. Uh, this is actually Astro Blasters at Disneyland. If you can see on the Buzz Lightyear face, it's rebooting something. I don't know. The, that's sideways, the projection of... Um, the startup screen for an LG video projector that's inside of there. So, I mean, you can go anywhere. I mean, the top 10 Disney ride breakdown, top 10 Disney ride breakdowns. This is the top 10 Disney animatronic 
malfunction failures. So all these things fail. I mean, if they have little droids that are going around on the floor, those are going to break. If you have multiple, you have the screens in the room, you have uh, the little wall that goes, you know, the thing that goes up and down, you know, in the room, in your, your room, that's the window that's, that's going up and down, right? You have that. Uh, there's, you know, more screens all the way through, you know, the, the uh, whole ship, quote unquote, uh, that are there. And there's, you know, all the, uh, the different uh, things like in the engineering, when you're pushing all the buttons, you know, those buttons also have a mean time before failure. And if you're over there and you've got a button that's blinking and you're pressing it and it's not even clicking, I mean, my, uh, I have some of you on my channel, I have a setup where I do Christmas lights outside. And those Christmas lights are hooked to a custom code program on a Raspberry Pi running Python, and that pushes data to a mechanical relay. Well, I've far exceeded the MTBF on those relays that half of the relays don't work anymore. They don't switch uh, because I've exhausted their use. So all of these things have this, right? And you've, you've seen it in, in you know, different parts of Disney as things get worn out. I mean, they need to go back and then refurbish and upkeep and, and do different things. I mean, the, you know, the, all the trays that come, you know, with, with the meals and, and everything else, those get broken, those get, you know, and then the chefs maybe get, you know, bored or lazy, you know, with the food that's coming out, especially the stuff that's all packed, you know, in volume in the boxes, the picnic boxes or whatever that they have, which is just ridiculous to me. If I'm paying that much money, I'm going to want food, sit down, give me food, you know, but I would need that food to be dairy free, gluten free, uh, meat free, dye free, you know, because certain dyes can cause certain health problems can actually can actually cause uh, migraines. Like if you uh, someone who, you know, you go to the movies, and we get a Sprite. No problems. Go to the movies, get a root beer that brown and red dyes that are in there cause asthma attacks. So I don't know if they're thinking about that for different people, about what, what's going on, you know, things like that. Um, but, you know, they have the, here's the little piece that's falling down. You know, how many times is that going to, you know, are they going to not have that fall down because suddenly it's going to not be working as, you know, you was originally planned, you know, after six, eight months, sudden, sudden, something goes wrong with it and it doesn't come down correctly. A motor, a switch, a relay, a safety switch gets kicked off so that thing doesn't come down, you know. And so now your experience is different. So what would be Disney's, you know, well, you know, the screen in my room wasn't working, the little visor, the little shade that goes over the outside space never came up so we never got to look outside and into space you know things like that and then the little thing that's supposed to fall down when ray and kylo were fighting didn't that didn't work either so what are we you know what are we supposed to do you're going to complain to them and say why isn't all this stuff working i thought this stuff was supposed to be working you get to the lightsaber training thing and half of the little projector pod things that whatever aren't working so you only have two people at a time instead of four so then it gets really slow trying to get through there and you can't do it the sabak table breaks down so that is you know the display go the display is just the lg logo because you know it's an lg tv or whatever back behind there and it just sits there and rebooting you know all day or it's just stuck on that logo or something you know you get enough of this happening and people are going to be like um uh, I paid six thousand dollars to be here. This stuff had better be working, right? So, I think long t long term, I think Disney has a undertaking this. I think they have a huge problem on their hands as it ages, right? That's really going to be problematic as some of these lighting things start to you know the little sparks that are supposed to be on the railing the one thing that i watched of the the demo the sparks were going off nowhere near where they were fighting so that isn't even you know matching i'm like wait why are the sparks over there they're fighting over there you know that's a little actor timing i think to get that right but um 
the cast members, of course, are doing everything that they can for your experience. But the mechanical parts and, you know, the com computer parts and some of these other things, you know, they fail. I mean, just go, like I said, go to YouTube and start looking up, you know, different failure things. And, you know, there's all kinds of things. There's, you know, great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Ugh. Right? I mean, that's... <laughs> That's not what you, I mean, if it's with your regular tickets, like, oh, wow, that isn't working. Okay, I get it. But if it's like, I paid $6,000 for this experience, and it's not working, and nothing is going right, and your app is crashing on my phone all the time that I was supposed to load, and, you know, do you have charging stations on the ship somewhere? Because all this wandering around with my phone out doing all this stuff, your app is killing my battery. You know, all these kinds of things come in. To play so I guess the biggest thing is to look at right now is May so this was the start and going to be the start and May was completely booked as of a week ago right May June I think July was fully booked I think a week ago when I checked um, yeah, August, September were kind of splotchy as well, but August is fully open, but May. So these people that have canceled right there, that is past their full refund time, right? If these people canceled in the last week after all these reports came out, that's problematic. People are canceling and losing money because they don't they think there's better value in losing a thousand dollars or whatever however much it would be than spending the whole four five six thousand dollars and going the huge message problem and this isn't even you know three years down the line when half of the item things inside the ship don't work right wow getting getting crazy for disney i mean there's a lot of their you know, videos out there, I just want to put that little take on it about what are we doing down, what are people doing down the road when this stuff really starts to not work. I, I don't think it's going to go well. I think people are going to complain. I, I don't think they're going to lower the price of it. I think it's just going to be wide open for booking all the time. I mean, until they decide, let's stop this. Let's just make it a regular hotel that you can pay for some other experiences, right? Kind of like the Harry Potter area. You can go there get your wand, do some other experiences that are that are there. And that would be amazing, right? A Harry Potter hotel? I mean, that thing would be sold out in three seconds. Crazy, crazy. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, what do you think? Is is it going to last? Are they going to keep it up? Making, you know, six grand a pop for people to go on this thing? I would hope so. Hopefully nobody's, you know, ex experiences are... And what are they going to do? Right? What do you think Disney would do if... You know, half the things we came on this sh ship to do don't work. What are you doing for me? Are they going to give you another cruise, quote-unquote, on the Starliner? Or are they going to say, well, we'll give you a 25% discount for next time? I don't know. Thanks for watching. Take care.